Hi, and welcome back to Tech for Your ESL Classroom. Uh, today we're on number four in our series here. And if you want to go back and check out the other stuff, because there's some really cool uh, things that were covered in one, two, and three. And then also I made a video on my workflow, how I make these videos. They're purpose purposefully uh, kind of raw uh, because I'm using all free things to make the videos in addition to covering free web-based tools that you could use in your ESL classroom. So let's get into it. Uh, today we're going to look at a site called Feedly.com. Uh, basically, and I'm going to get into this a little bit more, Feedly uses RSS feeds. And I'll talk a little bit about what RSS feed is in case you don't know. But yeah, it's a pretty cool website. The goal here is to deliver some stimulating articles and uh, some other things, some reading for teachers uh, that could serve as professional development. Um, there's so much going on in the arena of education throughout the world and we have got to be up on our game. Uh, not only are we dealing with technology these days, but also uh, different methodologies and just a ton of new ideas. So. Uh, that's the goal of using Feedly, is to provide some new ideas for teachers. So the audience would be teachers. Although I could see uh, using this and kind of introducing this to students too, because uh, you know it would be a great tool for them to learn how to use. Uh, yeah, and why use this? Why do it? I, it's the spirit of education, man. We've got to continue to evolve and become better teachers. Uh, if you're a teacher and you're not trying to do that, then uh, you're really missing the boat, I guess, because that's what we're trying to preach to our our students every day. Uh, how can we, how can you be a great teacher without wanting to learn yourself or having an enthusiasm for learning? Um, I'm not sure, but some people probably are, and I'm not mad at you, but I just don't see how I could be in teaching without that enthusiasm so yeah this tool is um, right up that that in that mindset right up that alley it will allow teachers to kind of continue or not kind of continue their um, their education so to speak with a multitude of different sources and in a, an efficient way so yeah, this kind of touches on the uh, International Society for Technology and Education standard uh, listed here. Uh, as professionals, we're, we, we need to grow in our fluency of technology um, and also in education. So I thought this really connected with what I'm trying to do with this particular item. Um, in case you're not familiar, RSS feeds are kind of like, uh, I don't know how to really describe this, it'd be like if you had multiple faucets running in your house and only one bucket was, all the water was going into one bucket. Or um, a better visual might be this picture right here, if it'll pop up. You have, down here you can see, you have multiple uh, feeds, multiple sources going into one. And this could be a website, and this could be a, a Twitter account, and this could be a whatever. And as soon as they change, their information is sent to the feed. The feed automatically knows when things are changed. And uh, then the, it's sent to you, and you can read it all in one place. And that's really the power of it, because you're notified whenever there's a change, and you can connect to multiple sources. Uh, it's just so efficient to see what's going on so if you didn't know about feeds there's a little bit about it but uh, basically it's it's like a, a one-stop shop for your reading and content on the web here's one uh, before I get into feedly the feedly is the the one that I chose to cover but there are a ton of RSS feeds feed readers and here's one feed reader called comma feed it's a open source code so you could use it for something else. Um, I don't think it's terrible. I just, I wanted to mention it, of course, or I wouldn't think, or 
I wanted to mention it, excuse me, because it's not terrible, but it's not my first choice. Um, there are other feed readers that offer uh, pictures, and here's one, goodnews.click, and I kind of prefer this uh, view a little bit better because I want a picture and a headline. And what the feed readers do is they, they usually give you a picture and a headline and maybe a short little blurb, and then you can quickly discern what you would like to read about. Uh, this is the default setting for good news, and it's listed with um, sports, but let's just picture that you have some education links, which I do on Feedly, and I'll show you in a second. Uh, and you can just quickly scan through things, and it's a really efficient way to uh, get the latest news in any area that you would want to focus on. So this is a, another alternative if you don't end up doing Feedly. But today, yeah, I'm going to cover Feedly. Uh, I like Feedly. I used it on my phone first, um, be, but then I jumped over to this web because I wanted to cover a web-based solution here. You know, you'll notice that here's a price, $5 monthly, 45 yearly. If you want to upgrade, of course you can upgrade and they give you these power search features. But Feedly is a free site. Um, one thing, I, I noticed that when I was trying to log in, you need some kind of uh, Facebook account or you need some kind of uh, social account. So that's one thing that it, I hope that doesn't hold you back. I do have a Facebook account, so I went ahead and just connected with Facebook. Um, but if it does hold you back, then Feedly is probably not your not your uh, source because I, I don't think you can make a username and an ID. It's just connected through these other social uh, networking sites like Facebook. So I I go ahead and log in through Facebook. And you'll notice. Uh, I have my board game feed. I'm huge into board games, so uh, I have a bunch of board game feeds saved over here. But I also started some education feeds. Um, this is a recent idea of mine, so I'm, I'm very new at it, but I've got a few things in here. Um, and it's suggesting some other things. And you'll notice it lists some new articles from these feeds, and it gives a picture and a little blurb. Uh, and I can quickly go through and I can check to, to say that I read it. Um, I can change the view if I want to go and do a different view. I prefer this view, but maybe you would just prefer titles uh, where there's no picture. And you can very quickly go through and read the title and the, you know, this is more like an email view, a little blurb from the beginning of it. You could do it like that. Usually this part is a description. And I apologize if this is a little bit, if you know about feeds already, uh, maybe you already know all this, but if you don't, then a little backstory is um, this Feedly was uh, actually a, gained a lot of popularity because Google, Google had a feed reader, which they discontinued, and then everybody jumped ship from the Google feed reader to Feedly. So uh, it's, it's really, really used a lot now. Um, so that's a little backstory. If you already know about feeds, perhaps that will interest you and tide you, tide you over a little bit. So there's Feedly. Um, what would you put in this, or how, how do you really do that? Uh, how do you connect these feeds, or what is a feed? And, uh, you know, let's go, get, go into that just a little bit more for people that don't know. Um, here is the Asian EFL Journal. Um, I haven't found a ton of, of ESOL sites yet. Like I said, I'm kind of new to this too, and I, I plan on using this, but I haven't used it all. Uh, it's kind of a new idea, but I think it's going to be a great idea, so I wanted to share it with you now today. Uh, so you go to this website, and you, you've probably seen these around the web, these little orange things. These indicate a feed, and for this particular site, I'm interested. So I'm going to click on the feed. And all it really is is just, uh, it's a, a web address where it, like I said, it publishes all, every change that is made. Mostly on like blogs, it's gonna give you a list of all the, uh, of all the, the blogs and the things that, that have come up that the user has made or the administrator has made. And what you're gonna do is go ahead and copy this from the, from the address bar up here. And then you can go to Feedly and just type it in right here and search for it. And it should come up here. 
Loading, loading, loading. Get your doggies. Okay. And then here it is. And you go through it. And now Feedly has taken that, all that gobbledygook. You know, like, it's kind of hard to read that. But Feedly's taken this XML and read it and turned it into a very nice, pretty format here for us. And if I want to keep this, which I do, I just add it to Feedly like that with the little green button up there in the in the right. And I can add it to my education is where I want to add it, right? So I click on education and add it. Boom. So now I've got that. So uh, one thing you can do is you can get feeds from websites. And uh, example, Asian EFL Journal. So that's pretty cool. Um, you might go to a different website, like this one is ESL Focus. Uh, I'm not sure how, how great, like the e Asian EFL Journal, I think I've read some stuff there, but this one I don't really know that well. But if you go to some websites, they'll list like a ton of different feeds, like they give you more specific feeds to sort through. Like this site, if it gets there, come on baby. I'm working through uh, Wi-Fi right now, so my connection's a little bit slow. Actually, I set my phone up as a, a Wi-Fi hotspot, so I'm bouncing through a phone and then out to Wi-Fi, so it's a little bit slow, I apologize. Um, here you can get, you know, kind of like separated feeds. Like here you could get all the articles from the website, or maybe you just want the job listings or whatever. Some sites will do that where they'll kind of uh, divvy up the RSS, RSS feeds. Um, so that's another kind of thing you can look for when you're doing websites. So websites are pretty easy. But then you jump to other things. You can put other things in this, in this Feedly as well. Um, like uh, one such thing you could put is a Twitter feed. And Twitter is a huge thing that people are, are underestimating. If you get on Twitter and follow like a couple people, you find some popular educators or people who are doing things in the education field, uh, and then you search through the people who they are following, uh, you can find some really cool things and people announce it, you know, instantly these awesome ideas. So you definitely want to get on Twitter and, and start following people. This uh, talks about how to add Twitter to Feedly. Um, as you can see from the, uh, the title up here. And there is all kinds of articles like this telling you how to add specific sources to Feedly or how to add it to your RSS feed reader. So there's all kinds of support online. Basically, you just have to go out there and do it. I'm not gonna go through everything, but I'm just gonna kinda go through the options. I'm not gonna go through how exactly you do all of these things because uh, you know that's gonna require a lot of time to go through it all. So you could add Twitter. That's one one thing that you could add. Um, what about adding a, a Facebook group uh, to the to the feed? You know, like maybe you're in some kind of Facebook group that that shares uh, posts all the time. You can do that. This uh, site wallflux.com for Facebook. You put in your group ID, and then it's gonna you're gonna say go, and it's gonna spit out a feed for you down here it gives you some different uh, feeds and then like let's say you click on this you've got your Facebook group feed and this is a feed for a, a board gaming thing again like I'm in a, a board gaming group uh, here in Korea and so then you would just take this this feed again copy it bring it over into Feedly and add it to your feeds and then you're gonna have it. And you know, like it, the, the time you save by putting all this stuff together is gonna be massive. You don't have to go to four different sites now. Um, you you don't have to really worry about all those emails. You could, you could kind of stop the emails if you wanted to, all the updates and stuff. Um, so yeah, there's another thing. You could put Facebook groups into it. Uh, then you jump into like Google stuff like what about Google communities? They are always posting stuff So I started to look into this because I'm a member of this this community here and uh, this is Google uh, Google Google Apps for Education group which uh, I became a member of because of the class I'm taking now tech 
uh, Tech in the Classroom. I, I forget the exact title. I apologize. Uh, AEP 800, though. Oh, that's what I'm making this video for today. Uh, taking a class at Fort Hayes State University. And there's my teacher right there. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, but anyway, yeah. What about adding this group to your feed? I, it's not so easy, it turns out. And uh, I looked around for this, and it seems like Google is trying to cut ties with the feeds. Uh, I went to a few things, and I found, oh, yeah, people are saying you can do it. You can, you know, turn a Google Plus account into an RSS feed. But you can't do the communities, I guess. You can do your own, but why would you want to do your own? That doesn't, I mean, why would I want an RSS feed for my my personal account? You could follow somebody else's personal account, I suppose. But I was looking for the community because that's where a lot of action is happening. And I wasn't finding great results with this. Google's been changing things here and there, and it seems like they're trying to avoid it. Um, I'm not sure why that is. When I tried to do things, this is the, the RSS feed that I got out of the whole adventure. Um, so I wasn't able to get Google Plus communities to give me a good feed, which is a kind of a bummer. And uh, that's one th issue with, you know, combining all these feeds is, yeah, you do have a lot of players involved and they're going to change things. So you got to be prepared for maybe something to stop working. Um, but I'm going to talk about maybe a possible solution to that here at the end and, and to kind of group all these things that aren't working together. And uh, so hopefully I can give you, I can recommend a tip to uh, solve that problem. If you jump to YouTube, it's kind of the same same situation, you know, like I'm finding people saying, hey, uh, you can get an RSS feed for your YouTube channel. Um, but the problem is that you, uh, YouTube, you know, which Google owns, is uh, again, not giving good uh, feeds. They're changing their, how they do business. YouTube changes a lot if you've been on YouTube. Uh, they change what they're doing all the time. So um, now that's outdated, that video that's kind of talking about, this video right here that's talking about uh, how to you or find your RSS feed. Um, so that's kind of out. And then you can find, you know, third-party sites. Like I've shown a few of them already, like this one that says, oh, yeah, you can get an RSS feed. But how long is that going to work? Because Google is probably going to change it, and then this site doesn't work, this method doesn't work. Um, so what what are you left to do? Um, uh, so how can we deal with this this Google issue? Because I, I'd really like to connect it personally. Um, one idea that I came up with was what about uh, email? Because you can get email from all these things. You get emails from Google Plus. And you get emails from uh, YouTube when you can get emails when a video is is posted. Um, so what about email? Well, it turns out email is an option. If you read this uh, article, I'll, I'll include all these links in in the description in the show notes below, so you can kind of peruse them yourself. But this article uh, talks about how you can uh, use an email account and create your own RSS feed. So uh, it's getting a little bit complicated, but basically you would have Google Plus send emails to you, to this uh, email account, and you could probably set up a separate one. You'd set up an email account like RSS-your name and send your Google Plus stuff there, all of it. And then uh, go on to YouTube, and if you go to YouTube and you go to your subscriptions, like this is my channel, uh, ESL Explorer, I have one subscription from the University of Oregon. They talk a lot about education. If you should, you should check out their videos. They got a lot of stuff. Um, I'm subscribed, so if I go to this little gear, which the gear is always next to the subscribe thing, I can have them send me updates, and uh, I can also do this, which is about uh, the YouTube feed. But I'm just going to say send me updates, and now. Uh, to my knowledge, I'm going to get uh, emails when University of Oregon uploads a new video. So I could have those emails go to this uh, RSS-my name, you know, different email account. And then from the email account, I could create an RSS feed and send that, send all of that back to Feedly. So there I could connect all the Google stuff. That's kind of the workaround. 
Um, again, if I'm explaining this too fast or you don't understand, please comment below. But basically, in a nutshell, there is a wide range of possibilities you could do with an RSS reader like Feedly, and it offers a ton of information which you could efficiently rifle through. And I just, I love the idea of it. And I, when I first heard about RSS feeds, I was like, I'm blown away by it. And this was a long time ago that it came out. Um, but I kind of haven't used it to its full, its full potential, at least in my professional life. I've been using it more for entertainment. But uh, it really would, could cross over well here and, and really get some great info headed to your brain. So check it out. And I think uh, it's a great way for us to, you know, become teachers who can model, like this, uh, again, this uh, standard here says, we can model and facilitate these uh, digital tools and be able to find and analyze things much more quickly using something like Feedly. And with all the things in this series, thus far at least, it's free and it's web-based and it's totally cool. So I hope that you'll check that out and give it a try. And again, comment, like, subscribe. Sp specifically comment about what uh, feed reader you use if you're using one or with any question that you might have and I'll try to help uh, the best I can. Look in the show notes again for any links that might uh, interest you. And I will see you later. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.